Hey guys, so now I'm going to be doing, uh, I guess you could say part two of identifying a helmet heat stamp. Uh, you know, the first video was uh, I basically covered from World War I through World War II. And now I'm going to be covering um, Korea through uh, Vietnam. So basically 50s through the 70s. Now honestly, I already made this video. I made it yesterday when I made the first video. But for some reason, I guess you could call it technical difficulties. And my video didn't save. And I'd already put everything back up. And now I'm having to do it again. But it's all good. Hopefully everything goes well with this go around. But I'm going to go over there's... Uh, you know, a little bit to cover in Korea, and then there's quite a bit in the Vietnam era helmets, so let's get started. This first helmet here is a model 1951-1952 Korean War era made uh, M1 helmet made by McCord. Now, the reason I use the word made is because, you know, a lot of shells from World War II were reused in Korea and Vietnam, but this is how you tell that you've got an actual Korean War made M1 helmet. Now, I want to say, uh, you know, from after World War II, really after late 1944, right at the tail end of 44, that's basically when front seam ended. So you will not have a Vietnam era made or Korean War era made uh, front seam helmet. It will be a World War II repurposed, you know, refurbished one and reissued. So it's always going to be rear seam. And uh, one thing I want to say is uh, in the, not the Korean War era helmets, um, they always started with the letter M. Now, there is an MW, which stands for Motor Works, which I, I don't have one of those, or I would include it in the video, but Motor Works, I'm not sure exactly how many of those are produced, but uh, McCord made, I've seen somewhere maybe around a million or so, you know, just kind of estimations there. But there would always be a letter M at the beginning of the heat stamp. I'm going to try my very best with the camera work here, but I don't know how good I'll be able to, to pick it up or not, but... Before the, you know, basically the, the start of the heat stamp, I don't know if it's going to show it, but it's the letter M, and then there will be a space, you know, just open space, basically, and then, you know, uh, two numbers and a letter, or three numbers and a letter, or whatever, which this particular helmet is M space ADA. So you see, it wouldn't be just M ADA, it would be M, and then there would be a space there, and then ADA. So if you've got a helmet that's, you know, it'd be rear seam swivel bell, and it starts with the letter M, then you've got you a Korean War era made, you know, early 1950s made helmet shell. Like, and also if it's MW, it's like I said, I don't have one of those, that'd be motor works, but um, like I said, you will not have a Korean War or Vietnam era front seam made helmet. It would be a repurposed helmet. So like I said, this is how you tell if you got the, the model 1951-1952 uh, M1 helmet. You'll have a letter M and then you know the heat stamp. And so that's basically how you tell tell that. Now I'm getting into, I've got four uh, representation of Vietnam era made M1s. These first two are made by Ingersoll. And the reason I've got two for this particular maker is I'll give you a little bit of history. The uh, Ingersoll is one of the three companies that produced M1 helmets during the Korean War, you know, mid 60s to late 70s. And um, they made uh, around 3.2 million helmets. It's like 3,174,000, something like that. But you know, close to 3.2 million. And they were produced from 1965 to 1968. And one thing about the uh, Ingersoll helmets is the font. And when I say font, you know, I mean the, the type of numbers and letters that are used, the, uh, the, the appearance of the numbers and the letters. Now, some Ingersoll helmets, you'll have the letter I, and then you might have a dash, and uh, the, the rest of the heat stamp, which would be numbers. Or you would have the letter one, I mean, I'm sorry, the number one, and then maybe a space in the numbers. Now, uh, there will not be any letters that follow the heat stamp, like two, like 2214A or 2214D or whatever. It would, there will not be a letter to follow. So, like, say so you got the I dash, you know, the heat stamp, or one space, the heat stamp. Those two different examples. And I've got one of each here. I'm going to say I'm going to do the best with my camera work here. See if I can prop this up so I can show you guys. Here's the heat stamp. Let me see if I can show you. There's a one. If you can see that. Then there's a space. One space. 
1054. So that's an Ingersoll, right? One space, 1054. Ingersoll, mid uh, 1960s produced helmet. This next one here, I'm going to show you. This one has a cover on it. If I can open it up here, I'll show you. Here's another one. Now look. See, this one is the letter I. This see, it's not a one. It doesn't have the little little line that, that makes the point of the one. It's an I and space two two one four. If you can see that. I'm gonna do the best I can with my camera work, but I'm trying to use this flashlight to help bring it out. See, there's a, it's definitely a letter I, but then you look where I said there's a one. It's, if you can tell, it's got the little line that comes down at the top to make it the number one. So I space 2214. So the I at the beginning and the number one are both representations of Ingersoll made helmets. So if you've got one of those, then you've got a 1965 to 1968, uh, you know, made uh, Ingersoll Vietnam helmet. It'll say to be rear seam, like I said, no more front seams, right? Now that covers Ingersoll. Now the next company that was involved with, uh, you know, M1 helmets during Vietnam is Parrish. And the Parrish company is basically um, part of the Dana Corporation, it's called. It's like a division of the Dana Corporation, which Dana was a big company that made, you know, all different types of things. And um, this is how you got a Dana. I put Dana on here, but really it's a, you know, a Parrish made, right? Parish made M1. Now, a little bit of background with the uh, the Parish ones was they were produced from like 1968 to 1970. You know, about three years, just like the um, the Ingersolls were. And there was about 1.8 million of these made uh, in that time period. Now, one thing about the Dana compared to the Ingersoll is a lot of times the Dana, or I see Dana, I mean the Parish, I'm sorry. Like I said, Parrish is made by, of Dana, right? So you got the Parrish M1s is the heat stamp would be stamped upside down. And honestly, they could be anywhere in the shell. I've seen one, a Dana, I mean a Parrish over here stamp near the rear. And even, uh, I've even seen heat stamps of World War II helmets, you know, made by McCord or even Schluter over here by the bells. But like I said, most of the time, the Parrish uh m1s you know would be upside down and the font you know the type of numbers they use is really odd and it's smaller than the ingersoll heat stamp now like I said, i'm gonna do my best to use a camera and this uh um uh, magnifying or sorry flashlight but anyway if you can see that you see you got six five two one right there six five two one now, the Parrish M1s would not have had a letter before or after. I've never seen a you know representation of that. It's just strictly numbers. And they're very small. You know, they're shorter, smaller numbers than the Ingersoll. And like I said, a lot of times they're going to be upside down. Could be anywhere in here or anywhere in the helmet. A lot of times they can be hard to see because they're so small and they've been painted over or lightly stamped or whatever. But that's how you tell you've got a, a, a Parrish. And see, I did my best to draw the what the numbers would look like. They're kind of squiggly looking. They're not really defined and and uh, perfectly, uh, you know, casted or struck or however you want to word it, but that's how you tell you got a, a, a parish made, right? And the last of the three companies here is RJ Stampings. RJ Stampings uh, was made in Canada. They're late war produced M1s. They were made from around 1970 to 1977. And like I said, they're made in Canada, and about 1.8 million were produced in that you know seven-year period. And um, a lot of times, uh, you'll see one way to identify you've got a RJ Stampings is they were, as far as my knowledge, the only company that would ship their helmets with styrofoam and tape, like a duct tape, basically. And a lot of times, you can see remnants of the the styrofoam or the tape which if you can see right there see that right there is basically duct tape you know residue or, or left over you see all the white in there which is probably from styrofoam from the packing when it was shipped here's the other bell you see all that in there this would have been a rj stampings now um 
another thing I wanted to point out, most of you might, most of you guys might see I've got a stainless steel rim, and you think, okay, that's World War II. This is rear seam, right? And from what I've seen, read uh, in different places, that somehow, you know, I guess R.J. Stampings in Canada got a hold of a bunch of uh, stainless steel rims that weren't used during World War II, and they purchased them and used them on their their helmets. And so that's why you could have a post World War II rear seam stainless steel rim, right? And um, so another thing about the the RJ Stampings helmets is just like the Parish, a lot of times they were stamped upside down. And uh, they don't use any letters before or after. Now the numbers on the um, the numbers on the RJ Stampings are just slightly taller than the Dana, but they're still not as tall, you know, as big as the Ingersoll made ones. And so I'll show you an example here. I don't even need a magnet. Uh, I'm sorry, a flashlight. 508. Now, from what I've seen, the RJ Stampings would have been three or four digits. Like I said, no letter before, no letter after. So don't wear yourself out trying to look for one because they, they're not there. But, um, like I said, they, um, this is the third and final company that produced M1s. Because basically, as production took place, you know, in the 60s and the late 70s, Going back uh, to the Ingersolls, 1965, 1968, right? Then you go into the Parish, um, 1968 to 1970. Then R.J. Stampings, 1970 to 1977, right? And so those are your three companies right there. And um, like I said, that all together, all three companies produced, it was somewhere around 6 million helmets, I believe, Um or actually, it was closer to 7 million, about 7 million helmets between the three companies between 1965 and 1977. So you're thinking about 12 years, it was, you know, around about 7 million helmets produced. Now you think about, add those to all of the World War II refurbished shells that were reused, and even the Korean War era made, model 1951, 1952, there was... There's a lot of helmets floating around, right? A lot of helmets being issued and uh, replaced and uh, re repurposed, reused for different things, for different groups of soldiers here and there. But anyways, guys, uh, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. I hope this video, just like the first one, has been a big help to you. Uh, I enjoy making videos like this. I've mentioned I can be kind of long-winded, uh, but I just try to get as much information out there as I can. I want to be th uh, thorough and and uh, easy to follow i guess so if you have any other questions you know i'd love to answer them for you guys hopefully like i said you can uh, save this video also maybe in your favorites and share it to your buddies or you know or whoever and get this information out there um it's just really good uh, what i believe really good stuff to share and another thing i wanted to say real quick is get you some reference books look Helmets of the ETO is great, especially for the McCord helmets. It's got a chart on there, shows you, uh, you know, their um, their uh, pr production. And get this, the M1 helmet by uh, Mark uh, Reynosa. These are great books. Uh, do you some studying on the internet, study Google, Wikipedia, reach out there. You know, if you find some great information, you know, save it. You know, print it off, put it in a folder, notebook or something, so you always have it, you know, but... Like I said, I don't claim to be an expert, but I, I've been doing this for several years, and I've got a lot of knowledge that I've picked up over the years from collecting and studying myself. And I want to share that, that with uh, you guys, just as with any of the other knowledge I might have on any military topic. So like I said, again, model 1951-1952, McCord, Korean War, the two different representations of the Vietnam Ingersoll, then you got the Parish, which was made by the, uh, from the Dana Corporation. They're like a division of the Dana Corporation, but they're called the Parish Helmet. R.J. Stampings, late Vietnam and Canada. But anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you guys a lot. Uh, this is just one of many videos that are on the way. So stay tuned. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe. Thank you.